Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at an interesting concept known as density altitude. Uh, basically what density altitude is, is if you take all the temperature and all the pressure and you kind of take a look at the actual effects, as the temperature increases, the air density decreases, as the temperature decreases, the air density increases. So for an airplane, you would think that might probably not have that much of a big impact on the actual performance. So we're actually going to demonstrate just how much of an impact density altitude can have on your airplane today in something even this small. So I'm going to go up to here, I'm going to go pop over to my weather control real fast, go up to my settings, and if I scroll down to the bottom, I have my temperature and MSL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crank the sucker up uh, to a nice uncomfortable temperature here. Let's see here, uh, 25 Celsius, uh, we'll go right up to 40 on the Celsius, so we can make this a nice dramatic change here. So obviously 40 Celsius is uh, very, 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 very toasty. It's 103 degrees Fahrenheit, and my engine just cut out, so it's so hot, even the engine doesn't want to keep on running, just to give you an idea how it impacts your engine's performance as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a takeoff, and then we're going to do a landing. We'll freeze everything down, and you'll be able to see very, very clearly how much of an impact this is going to make. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kill the brakes, and we'll give us full power. We'll do it as a short field takeoff, so I'm going to wait to my RPMs at maximum, let go of the brakes, and off we go. So we're going to go ahead and try to keep our numbers as uh, similar as possible here, just to, again for the purposes of showing you how big of an impact temperature has. And I can already tell you this aircraft is going, oh, kind of a thing as it rips down the runway here. Oh man, is this thing going to take off today, or is it going to be like next week? This is ridiculous. Look at that. I've already hit the middle taxiway. All right, 55 knots. We're going to go ahead and lift the nose up gently, and we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure we're nice and coordinated during the initial climb. We do have a crosswind like we always do, but, you know, nothing new. All right, I'm going to bring the nose a little bit over to the right here, and we're just going to go ahead and enjoy a nice gentle climb here. I'm actually having to push the nose down from my usual favorite seven and a half degrees as I desperately try to build up some version of a climb in this particular aircraft. So there you have it. It uh, looks like we're going at about, let's call it 650, 700 feet per minute in our initial climb. Obviously, like I said, we're getting gusted around here, but there's nothing new again, hot summer day. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and I'll come around and I'll put this thing on the ground and see the difference on an approach. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put my flaps all the way to the down position. I'm gonna go ahead and get her out. Uh, airspeed to about 65. Like I said, we've got a bit of a fun little crosswind kind of hitting us here, and I'm already noticing I want to go ahead and apply any sort of power with this thing, that it's just, it, it, it takes time to respond. Of course, I think there's a bug with my throttle here too. I mean, look at this kind of action, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So the uh, first thing I notice is that it's just sluggish. You know, if I whip on the controls, it rotates eventually, but then it has a lot more carry to it. So again, I wouldn't want to go flying in 100 degrees, especially with an aircraft that does not have air conditioning. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing all set up. Remember, we're going to have to do ourselves a bit of a crosswind landing, like I was saying before. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start by crabbing. I'm going to go ahead and push my left foot forward to line us up at the end of the runway. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my right uh, aileron here in order to keep us nice and straight on the runway. And this is the wing low technique. Coming down pretty smooth here. If I see myself start to drift to the left of the runway, I'm just going to tip myself just a teeny bit more. And we'll go ahead and bring ourselves all the way down here. All right, check my flaps. Check to make sure everything else is in the correct position. Nice and bumpy. Again, a very, very high temperature. My throttle's completely at idle. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Okay, I can just sort of coast down to the ground here. All right, bring ourselves over the numbers. We're going to lift the plane a few feet off the ground here, and you're going to be fighting it the whole way down. A little bit of left foot, bring the nose up, and we are down. Neutralize ailerons, neutralize rudder, and keep us on the runway. All right, so that's what it looks like when conditions are extremely, extremely hot. Now, what happens when the conditions get a little bit cooler? All right, we've got ourselves restarted. Everything's looking pretty good here. I'm going to go pop over to my weather settings. Now we'll scroll down this time. We'll go ahead and drop the temperature all the way down to, well, let's make it minus 10 on this Celsius scale here. That's a pretty cold day. So now when you reduce the temperature, you're basically increasing the density of the air. So not only will we have more lift, but your propeller is going to work better, your engine's going to work better. Everything in general is uh, just going to want to bite into the air more, and we should expect a much higher climb. So let's go ahead and use our short field technique again. Wait until this thing comes up to full RPM. I'm noticing I'm getting just a couple, about 500 more RPM than I got. Not 500, I'm getting about 50 more RPM. So I let go, and I notice immediately the aircraft is definitely picking up speed a little bit quicker than it was the first time. Remember, we've left the wind completely alone in this particular case. There's 40 knots. Five, and I am airborne before I even got to the halfway point where the other aircraft was struggling. I'm going to go ahead and bring the nose down just a little bit, and we're going to climb at about, well, the usual seven and a half degrees seems to be the magic amount here. Put that nose to the correct position. We've got to build up a little bit extra speed here. And nose up just a little bit more, and it looks like uh, we're working great here. Uh, my current climb rate is uh, stabilized at about 
1,050 feet per minute. Oh my gosh, that is a tremendously quick climb rate from anything that's uh, got 180 horsepower. That's impressive. So we can already see we're almost getting double the performance at this particular case. Now, this is where things are going to get interesting. What happens when we try to land the plane? All right, we've got ourselves on a somewhat unstable approach here. We'll go ahead and clean that up real fast. All right, flaps are down. Now we're going to get ourselves to our usual speed of about 65 knots. Obviously, we're going to have the same problem we're going to have with that pesky crosswind this time. Of course, because the air is so much denser, however, you'll notice that my control response is going to be significantly more precise as I approach down to a landing. Now, this is just kind of one of those nice little quirks that you always get when you get situations like this. So remember, same crosswinds, same gust, much, much more stable. I'm also noticing my engine response is a lot cleaner, and it's a lot easier to get the speed that I actually wanted to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with a little crab on our approach here, make our life a little bit simpler. All right, going to switch to a wing low here. All right, bring it in nice and easy. 65 knots stabilized. Nice. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Just increase power a little. Oh my gosh, you don't even need to, like, touch the power, and this thing starts getting fast on you already. I just saw that pickup truck change direction. That's pretty scary. All right. Again, same conditions, same gusting. The only difference is that it's uh, quite a bit cooler outside. Go ahead and kill the throttle. We're going to play the same game we did before. Now, I expect the ground effect to be very, very, very strong here. Yes, exactly what I expect. The plane does not want to set down on the ground. And we're down. Go ahead and use my feet here. A little bit of brakes. And we're awesome. Wow, that was a much, much more controlled approach, and it was also much easier to dial in exactly how much energy. So hopefully this video helps uh, make you realize the difference between density altitudes. Obviously, this affects big airplanes as well. Uh, the difference between speeds is even greater if you have a very large airplane. You know, I understand that there are some places out there because the density altitude gets so high, it basically becomes impossible to fly. Now, if we're at high altitude, the density altitude can be even worse. Enjoy.